Hello everyone, this is Scott Stengel from the Melco Applications team, here today to talk to you about two new features in Design Shop 11, the primer and the basting stitch. So for Design Shop 11, we wanted to introduce help for sewing on really thick napped fabrics, such as very outrageously napped uh, towels, uh, thick polar fleece, Berber, fabrics of that nature. And also we wanted to give help for very delicate, very small or unhoopable type uh, fabrics. So we came out with the primer and the basting stitch. So first let's start with the primer stitch. Basically what a primer stitch is is two uh, low density cross hatched fills that go down on the garment first normally sewn in the garment color so it tends to be more invisible um, to, to compress the fabric and make the embroidery um, stand forward and look clearer. So let's just add it to a monogram. So I will click on my letter tool. I pick circle monogram at three inches. Uh, I can spell out uh, A, B, C and then a nice border. Uh, I'll center it. So to create the, the primer stitch, all I have to do is select what I want the primer stitch to be added to, right click, go to operations, down to generate basting primer, and here's my two choices. So I'm going to pick primer. The, the values we have uh, control over are the offset, that's how far outside of the embroidery the border um, goes to as well as the stitch length of the fills and the density of the fills. Um, we picked some pretty good default values that work well. Um, if you find you want different values and you're going to use them all the time, you can set them up, then save as defaults and they'll be there for you every time that you come back. Okay, so it's that easy. Uh, let's say it's on a light green towel, so I would change the background color to a lighter green. So it's going to put down these two fills first, compress the fabric, and then put the monogram on top. It's that easy. If you don't have the feature, you could digitize a uh, fill, duplicate it, um, put in the correct properties, change the directions so that they're 90 degrees from each other. But this is a very nice time-saving um, feature. So that's how to add it. Um, of course, we don't stop there, we have to push this as far as we can go. This can be used for other things. Um, notice that the border is, is pretty simple. I mean, it's not meant to form exactly to every shape because that's going to make the border or the, the, the primer stitch more noticeable. So it's a very simple uh, meandering outline. But we can use it for other things. Um, let me switch to a logo. And here's one that we have, so I can simply just select the entire logo, right click, operations, primer basting, set it whatever I want, and now it does logos as well as lettering underneath. Now let's say in another situation uh, that the design was fine, it had plenty of underlay, that's going to look great, but we added text underneath. So rather than prime the whole entire design, I'll just prime the text that's underneath. So I select it, then I'll right click, operations, generate the basting primer. I'm going to go to the primer, and since this is smaller, I might set it uh, 20 points or something like that. So now, um, it's going to put a primer just under the text at the bottom and everything is going to work out well for that. Um, so another choice that we have is to um, use it to make a column border around an entire logo. Now remember it's simple so it could take a little bit of editing if it's very very complex outer shape to get it just like you wanted. Let's say that we're going to sew this bulldog on a brown towel. So the brown on brown is going to hide pretty much and not stand forward like we want it to. So what I can do is select the entire design, right click, go to operations, back to the primer, and I would set this very small, something like uh, two points. 
boom. Okay, so it's behind it. If I turn off everything and show you just the first color, it's the primer is behind the entire design. I don't want a primer though, I want a border. So what I would do is delete one of the fills, and then we have the change element type right over here, or the hotkeys such as if I want to replace, I can hold uh, control and then I would click on single line. Uh, 20 points is going to be a little bit thin. Let's go up to something like 30, 35, and then change it usually uh, to white. So now, if uh, I had a black garment, you can see that it stands forward. Cool operation for it, huh? All right, <coughs> then also, um, you, you'd think that you could do this kind of by hand. Okay, I want a white border because this is going on a black garment, something like that. Well, if I would highlight this and Control D to duplicate it, change the color to white or something like uh, that, and enlarge it, you can see that <coughs> nothing matches up because it's a rectangular logo. So as I scale it proportionally, still it's too big in, in the X direction for Y and nothing lines up. So a better choice would be to select the design, go to the uh, primer stitch, and select it again for about two. And then I can delete one of them and change this with control click on single line I want it to be white and I can go up in my thickness and now I have a perfectly proportional uh, logo border around it that goes down first I mean another option <coughs> excuse me would be to use both of the generated uh, primer stitches, turn one into a, a little bit higher density fill, and put a border around it with the second. So a lot of different options to choose from. Um, so that's the primer stitch. Then the basting stitch, um, we'll show you. Oh, I want to show you one more cool thing. So <coughs> we'll go back to the monogram. And uh, when I was over in Switzerland learning these large machines, uh, shuttle machines, they're called, uh, looks something like this. <laughs> Not a single head for sure. These machines get up to uh, 40 yards long and some of them are two stories tall. It has a ladder and a catwalk up here and a whole nother level. These machines are used for uh, creating fashion fabrics, embroidered, um, evening gowns, lace curtains, just all that kind of stuff. And uh, when I was over there learning it, they were creating um, shadow embroidery. So that's <coughs> sort of like where you put down the embroidery and then you applique over the top of it, but the applique fabric is something very thin like organza. Organza is sort of like twice as dense as Bride's Veil, so still see-through, but um, not quite as open. Um, and they were doing these shadow embroideries on the fabric over the top. Looks super, super cool. So let me show you how to create that. Back to our monogram, we have uh, our primer stitch already done, but if I go in, I can delete one, like we talked about, and take this one, and instead of turning it to a single line, I'm going to actually change it into applique. All right. So for this, <coughs> I normally then, of course, I'm going to put <laughs> the applique after. And so it looks terrible on screen, but if you highlight it, you can get the impression that it's going to do the monogram, then it's going to do a locator stitch um, for me to put my organza fabric on, and then it's going to top stitch it in place. So you kind of get an impression that you can see through the fabric to the monogram or design that's underneath. So pretty cool uh, application of an offshoot of the primer stitch, huh? 
Okay, so now let's go on to the basting stitch. So for the basting stitch, it's a single walk stitch outline around a design name, monogram, whatever you want, um, that puts long walk stitches down and it secures your fabric to backing that you have, let's say in a hoop. But then after it's all done, you would remove that basting stitch. That's why it's done in very long six millimeter or you can pick four and a half millimeter um, walk stitches. Two lock stitches, <coughs> very long stitches, <coughs> excuse me, makes it very easy to tear out. So for this, uh, let's just say that we have to sew uh, a little name on a, um, a dress for a doll. I mean, how are you going to hoop that, right? There's no hoops that are small enough. Okay, so first we will create the name. Uh, for this, we'll do a script. I'll pick, uh, oh, Colorado script is a terrific one. Whoops. <coughs> And we'll pick a small size, uh, 0.4 or something like that. And uh, the doll's name is Heidi. <coughs> okay. Now this is really, really small. And um, we want to put a basting stitch around it. So right click, Operations, back to Generate Basting Primer. But this time we're going to select the basting stitch. Here our uh, controls are how far offset outside of it it's going to be as long as well as the stitch length of that walk stitch. So six millimeters is going to be nice and easy to tear out. The hundred's going to be a little bit big probably for this small one. So well, let's try 50. All right. So you can see that it put a single walk stitch around it and so this this would be easy because I would take and hoop some tear away and then rather than using spray adhesive which is common to the back of the fabric to stick it um, if it was delicate or for whatever reason I didn't want to do that the basting stitch is a perfect um, solution for holding things in place until you can get the embroidery done and then you tear it out later um, <coughs> In the hoop projects use this, uh, quilters love this um, for their quilting squares, um, doll clothes, wherever you don't want to use spray adhesive, um, things like that it's terrific use for. So hopefully uh, you'll use the primer and basting stitches and uh, have great success with them and enjoy them. Thank you and we'll catch you next time.